that moves us to the New England Patriots. I know that you were going to have some stuff to say about this. So, let me go ahead and start off with this. Obviously, the odds brought to you by BetUS.com. The 9.5 win total to go over is minus 110. To go under is minus 120. So, they think it is more likely that they go under, but not by much. Uh, With that said, to win the division, plus 350. That is number three in the division. To win the AFC, plus 1,600. To make the playoffs is yes at plus one uh, plus 110, excuse me, and no is minus 140. They are projected favorites in only seven games this year. Their projected strength of schedule is number 19. However, it's, it's a kind of tough schedule. Like, you look at it, and there's some spots where, oh, man, they could make a run here. They could do this and that, da 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 But they have the worst rest differential in the NFL, minus 15 games. They have got three teams on the schedule that are coming off buys. That doesn't usually happen. Uh, For whatever reason, they got loaded down with teams that are coming off of extra rest this year. Uh, It's it's a lot. I mean, it's just a ton. 2020 was their first win total under in 11 years. Uh, They spent $160 million in guaranteed money in free agency, and they kind of overhauled the roster. However, they they only signed one wide receiver. They traded for another one. So the skill position, still a little... A little iffy. Now, they did bring in some pass-catching tight ends, John U. Smith and Hunter Henry. That's going to be big-time additions. Uh, several opt-out guys coming back in this year. The defense brought in uh, Matt Judon and Devin uh, Gotcho, um, or Gotcho, excuse me. Uh, they brought in Mills. They brought in Van Noy again. Uh, the passing game looks better with Mac Jones. Uh, Cam Newton should be healthy this year, so whoever wins that, I would hope it is improved over what they had last season. And... You know, I mean, they've got they got options on offense now. The run defense was the Achilles heel last year, but, you know, they got guys that are opting back in this year. The new additions, you know, Judon and Gacho, it, that should fix that issue. Uh, I mean, Belichick found a way to win seven games with that trash roster last year. Like, everybody talks about, oh, they, they were down, they were down. Okay, yeah, but... They, they have the most money tied up in guys that opted out. They have the yes. most talent that opted out of anybody in the league. And I think Bill encouraged it. I, I think so, too. I think they are going to be really, really good this year yeah. because Bill be Belichick, different. with that garbage roster last year, found a way to win seven games with a Cam Newton that couldn't even throw. Like, that's ridiculous. The amount of opt-outs that he had on defense, everything that was going on, they still won seven games. And it was a tough schedule last year. This year, they have a little bit of an easier schedule. And while, while the rest differential is one thing, if you're a better team, it shouldn't matter. Right, so the rest differential it it's it's a pain in the ass to deal with as a team, as a franchise, but realistically, teams are five hundred coming off of bye weeks. You know, for the most part across the league, um, and then and then also like against the spread, they're about five hundred. So yeah. like it it it, it doesn't make a huge to difference. not matter one way or the other. Some guys are unbelievable coming off of buys, but then there are other teams that are just bad all the time, and so those things. Those guys that are unbelievable are also really good all the time. Like they, they win 12, 13 games all of the time. So coming off of a bye is no different than every other week for them. The teams that lose all the time, lose all the time, no matter if they get the bye or not. And the teams that are in the middle, it's about 500 if they win after their bye or not. So I don't, I don't know. Like it's an interesting thing to look at, but I don't know that it equates to anything that actually changes anything on the field outside of, they're going to play teams that are more rested than them, but that it doesn't always. It doesn't always, always matter. Yeah, doesn't always yeah. matter. I, so I, I think this team. I'm going over the nine and a half. By the way, let me go on and say that at minus oh, yeah, one ten. Yeah. I've got them making the playoffs at plus one ten. Uh, I think they could absolutely fight for this division. And everything that I have heard out of training camp, these guys want Mac Jones to be the quarterback. Like uh, no, the, 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 uh, you're reading, you're reading Alabama stuff, Gary. That's a, John it's, already, Smith it's already and all been these named guys? that Cam's going to be the starting. In the last two weeks of camp, Cam has looked better than Cam has ever looked in a Patriot uniform. So, okay. Like, he's he's gotten this offense down. His throws look way – like, the the selected things that get put out on Twitter that, that you know, where guys have an errant throw and then another guy has a great throw looking at the same route, they both run that route like ten times, all right? And, and both of them had – times where they missed real bad, and both of them had times where they looked really good. So what gets put out on Twitter is just what gets put out on Twitter. 
All right? Okay. That's, that's just a different world. All right, so you're, um, you're seeing something different. You think, like, Cam Newton is... Well, that's because I listen to Patriots news. I don't listen to <laughs> Alabama news, Gary. You follow Alabama guys, and I follow Patriot guys. That's the difference. Okay. Um, it, it, not that Mac Jones won't take this job, and not that Cam won't play poorly, Okay. But as of right now, Cam's already been given the job. That's done. We're recording this Sunday night, Tuesday, you know, Sunday, Sunday night, August, August 1st. 1st. going to come yep. out August 2nd. Um, he's already been given the job. He's, he's, from what they've seen in camp, he's the starter. And this is not a Andy Dalton's our starter. He's a placeholder starter for a little bit of time. Bill doesn't do that shit. Yeah. Everyone no, in the right. world knows Bill doesn't play games with the starting position of the quarterback. All right? I think he believes... Cam gives them the best opportunity to win. If you watch Cam Newton's first three games last year, before he got COVID, basically, and particularly in the shootout loss uh, in Seattle last year, how good he played, how unbelievable he carried that team and how great he played. Even in a loss, we were talking about him in the MVP conversation. That's, that's exactly yeah. right, by the way. With a trash football team, trash football team, they are significantly more talented now. They got all their COVID back. The, the, the one caveat that has to be figured out, the most important piece of them all is Stephon Gilmore. That, that has yeah. to be figured out. They got to figure out his money, and they got to get him paid. If Stephon walks, his defense hurts massively. Like that's a, that's a huge hole, and that matters. Stephon shows up. I, I, I just trust Josh. I trust Bill. They've er, I think they've earned the right for this trust, by the way. For, for it to be a situation where whoever the starting quarterback is, I believe, is going to give them the best shot to win that game. Okay? I can believe so that. So it doesn't matter to me which one is starting. I don't know that I would change a point spread depending on who was starting. I don't know that I would change the number at all. This is an organization that I've seen earn the right to, to, to be trusted until proven otherwise. Okay? Is, this, uh, is this Ernie's last season? It's Ernie, Ernie's, right? Ernie's done. I think Ernie retired. Oh, so so he's not even dealing with the season. I don't think season. Ernie's there this year. I think Ernie retired in the offseason. Now, I might be wrong. This might be Ernie's last season. That's, I know it was his last draft. I didn't know if it was the last yeah. season. I don't so. know. And he's still going to be there for consulting and stuff like that. He's just yeah. not going to, you know, he's not going to be an everyday part of the team. Um, It's, I mean, this is this is all heart, no no head. But I, I think this team won seven games. Their head their quarterback got COVID last year and then significantly fell off and just did not look right the rest of the year. Said he couldn't catch his breath. Said he couldn't catch his lungs. That that affects everything about your play. You know? So, they obviously know Cam's not the future, so they go out and they draft a quarterback, but this is not an organization that ever wants to hand the keys to, you know, to a 20-year-old. Like, they 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 would like an adult in the room to, to, to drive this ship. Um... I, I do think Cam right now today gives them the best chance to win, but but once again, I just trust the front office. I think this defense, this defense got five guys back from COVID protocol that that opted out last year, and those weren't five scrubs. Well, they got four guys back, and one guy retired. But like, starter, that's not starter that's quality, not a big, and then that's not including the signings that they made. They're going to run their offense the way Bills always want to run his offense, which is through the running back situation and through the tight ends. Bills never put value at the wide receiver position ever, ever. One time he went out and got Randy Moss. Once. That's it. And he only had he to likes, pay a third rounder for it. So he likes, he likes slot guys, and he likes big tight ends because of the matchup problem. That's it. There's, there's nobody big enough to guard them that's fast enough to guard them. And that's, that's what he wants. To, he feels like I can all if he's got both those guys healthy and a a running back that can catch the football out of the backfield there's there's no time where he doesn't feel like he can get a first down you know yes and that's that's just the offense he's wanted to run his entire life and with that you're not you don't need a Josh Allen you don't need somebody now it's fun and I'd like to have somebody who can throw the ball 40 yards down the field and I'd like to have somebody who can go down there and catch a 40 yard bomb it just ain't gonna happen a lot. This yeah. is not. This is not what he wants to do. He but wants to you, control around his. He wants to play the game like Army. Yeah. If you want, if you want to look at the NFL uh, all-time best offenses, most efficient offenses, whatever, all of them have great pass-catching tight ends. Uh, yes. All of them. So yes. if now you run got it too, yeah. and he's the only one that ever had two to begin with. By the way, yes. 
Yes, you're right. And he didn't get to see that to fruition because one of them ended up being a homicidal maniac. Yes. Yes, indeed. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.